But on Monday, what we had a look at is we had a look at the fact that there are two different kinds of number patterns that you get. First of all, you get pattern A. And pattern A, the kind of patterns we're looking at with pattern A, are what we call patterns with a constant difference. So constant difference. All right. So, for example, what does it mean if there's a constant difference? Well, the first one that we have up on our screen, we've got 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, and 20. So what do we see the constant difference is between those numbers? Well, the difference between 5 and 8 is 3. The difference between 8 and 11 is 3. 11 and 14 is 3, and so on and so on. So we know that there is a constant difference of 3. So if I'm looking at my next one now, I'm going to say 20 plus 3 will give me 23. And 23 plus 3 will give me 26. So pattern A can be formed by adding 3 again and again. So the difference between one term and the next is the same. And in maths, when we're saying that something is the same, the fancy way to say that is that something is constant. So let's have a look at a different example to the ones we looked at on Monday, okay? I've got 3, 7, 11, and 15. So the first thing we need to work out is, is there a constant difference? Well, to get from 3 to 7, I add 4. From 7 to 11, I add 4. 11 to 15, I add four, which means that I definitely have a constant difference. So what do I need to do now? I need to go say 15 plus four gives me 19. 19 plus four will give me 23. And 23 plus four will give me 27. Right. What I will do when I'm finished filling in this whole note is I'll make it a little bit smaller so you can take a screenshot of the whole screen for yourselves. Let's go over to the other side and look at the different other kind of number patterns that we get. So pattern B, all right, has to do with numbers that what we call have a constant ratio. And we spent quite a bit of time with this on Monday. So if you're not sure about what I'm talking about and you're really lost, there's no need to feel confused. We're going to go through the lesson slowly today again. And what you can do is you can go back and you can watch the video from Monday as well. So if I'm looking at pattern B, what's happening now at pattern B? Well, I've got 2, 6, 8, 18, 54, and 162. So if it was me, the first thing I would try to do was I would try to see what the constant difference is between the numbers. So first I would say, okay, between two and three, I add four. Between six and 18, I add 12. 18 and 54, I add um, 36. All right, so straight away I see, mm, guys, I don't have a constant difference, do I? There's no constant difference there. So that means if I don't have a constant difference, what other kind of number pattern can I have? I can have a constant ratio. So I then say to myself, all right, if I'm going to have a constant ratio, three times by what gives me six? So how do I get from three all the way to six? I multiply it by three. How do I get from six all the way to 18? I multiply it by three again, and so on and so on. So when I get to 162, what must I go and do? I must go say 162 times by three. Three times two gives me six. Three times six gives me 18. Three times one gives me three, plus one gives me four. So I get 486. How am I going to find my next number? I also need to multiply that by, six, by 3. So I need to say 486 times by 3. 3 times 6 gives me 18. 
3 times 8 gives me 24, plus 1 gives me 25. 3 times by 4 gives me 12, plus 2 gives me 14. So my answer is 1,458. So I saw that each time what was happening, I was multiplying by 3. So that's what we did in our last lesson. Pattern B can be formed by multiplying by 3 again and again. So the ratio between one term and the next is the same, or it is constant. Let's have a look at this example that I've given us. I'm looking, I've got 4, 8, 16, 32. 4 times by what gives me 8? You can tell me in the chat, everybody. 4 times what will give me 8? Four times what? Let's have a look in the chat. Good. Four times two. Eight times by two gives me 16. 16 times by two gives me 32. Awesome. So now I'm going to go say 32 times by two will give me 64. 64 times by two gives me 128. And 128 times by 2 gives me 256. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the screen a little bit smaller for you guys. So that you can take a nice screenshot of that whole note. All right. So have a look. Take a nice screenshot. Okay, Mr. Hugo has put some instructions there on how to take a screenshot on a Windows PC. He's put some instructions there on how to take a screenshot on a MacBook. If you're using your phone, I'm sure that you know how to take a screenshot on your phone. Okay, but there is the notes, a nice complete picture of the difference between a constant difference and a constant ratio that you can go back at and you can look at again and again and again. Okay. Now, at the end of Monday's lesson, I asked you guys if there were any more questions, but please put your questions in the chat for me. And the questions that came up the most from Monday's lesson was, ma'am, please can you do the weird patterns once more? So please can you do the weird patterns once more? All right, we're going to use these weird patterns as a bit of a brain break for us tonight. So We've looked at arithmetic, we've looked at geometric. I'm telling you that these are weird patterns, okay? So this is gonna be a little bit, bit of our brain break, a little bit of a challenge, okay? Let's have a look at nine, 10, and 11. If you were here on Monday, you would have seen that I did the answers for you, okay? If you have got them down from Monday, try not look at the answers and let's try do them again. So for number nine, I'm gonna rewrite it so I have a bit more space. I've got five, seven, 10, 14, 19, and 25. So that's number nine, okay? If I'm looking at this number pattern, the first thing I want to do is I want to find out, do I have a common difference or do I have a common ratio? So I would go first and I would look at what the difference between these numbers are. So the difference between five and seven, I added two. Between seven and 10, I added three. Between 10 and 14, I added four. Then I added five. And then I added six. So I definitely don't have a common difference, but I am noticing that there's a pattern. Okay, there's a bit of a pattern that's forming here. Right, so I'm, what did I do? I added two to five to get to seven. Then I added three to seven to get to 10. And then I added four to 10 to get to 14. I added five to 14 to get to 19. I added six to 19 to get to 25. So the next number that I need to add is I'm going to add, I'm gonna to have to add seven to get to my next number. So 
If I take my next number and I say 25 plus 7, that's going to leave me with 32. Okay, what's going to happen with my next number now? Well, to get to my next number, what do I need to do? I need to add 8. 32 plus 8 will give me 40. Right, so that's one way that you can do a weird number pattern. Okay, that's one way that you can do the weird number pattern. What I'd like you to have a look at is I'd like you to have a look at number 10. So go and have a look at number 10. I'm going to redraw him here for myself. So I have a bit more space. 99, 84, 71, 60, and 51. Okay. So what do I do when I'm looking at number patterns? The first thing I want to do is I want to see, is there a constant difference? So I go and I subtract the numbers from each other. So 99 minus 84, the difference is 15. To get from 84 to 71, I minus 13. To get from 71 down to 60, I minus 11. And to get from 60 to 51, a minus nine. So in the chat, Mr. Hugo and I are going to open up the chat. Who can give me the next pattern here? What's the next number that I'm going to get? Okay, what's the next one? So I've got 99, 84, 71, 60, 51. What's my next number going to be? Okay, good. Nice, everybody. Well done. Good. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for putting your answers in there. We're going to switch that off. So we've got 44. How did I get to 44? So I'm seeing I've got 15, 13, 12, uh, sorry, 15, 13, 11, 9. What's happening? I'm going down in twos. So then I'm going to say minus 7. So 51 minus 7 gives me 44. Then what am I going to do? My next number is going to be minus 5. So 44 minus 5 is going to give me 39. Okay. Right, last one of our special type here, number 11. I had 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. So in our last topic that we did with Toby, in our last topic in grade seven, we did a lot of exponents and we worked on exponents and squares and cubes and we had quite a few lessons on those if you remember. Okay. When we had those lessons, I told you it's a really good idea for you guys to draw up your table and for you to re revise and remember and learn your square numbers. And so if I'm looking at these numbers, I can see that these look very familiar for me, especially if I've been practicing. So one is the same thing as saying one squared. Four is the same thing as saying two squared. Nine is the same thing as saying three squared. 16 is the same as saying four squared. And 25 is the same as saying five squared. So what's the next number gonna be? One, two, three, four, five. I'm then going to say 6 squared, and my next one will be 7 squared. So 6 squared gives me 36, and 7 squared gives me 49. So 36 and 49. Hey. So I've gone through these ones again for you. I hope that you understand them a bit better now. We did go over them on Monday again. We've gone over them again tonight. If you're still not sure, what I would suggest is you go back, you watch the video from either Monday or tonight, you have a look at them again, and you go through them and you practice. Tonight, we're going to move on to our new work. 
Okay, so let's have a look at our new work today. Right, so the table says, the table below shows the total cupcakes eaten at a party as more kids attend. So we add a birthday party. Okay, there's a table of cupcakes, all right? And we're having a look at how many cupcakes get eaten as we add more people. Each kid eats three cupcakes. The first kid eats an extra two. So they have a total of five. So it's kind of like you're the first kid at the party. What happens if you're the first person at the party? You get your choice of what you want, eh? Hey? If they say to you, you can only have three, uh-oh, you had five by accident. All right. So they're saying to us that the first kid at the party, there he is over here, kid number one, he ate five cupcakes. Okay. But then each time a new child arrives, so here we go. Now there'll be two children at the party. Each time a new child arrives, how many cupcakes does that new child eat? That new child eats three cupcakes. So the first child he got there, he ate five. The next child got there, he ate three. So how many cupcakes were eaten altogether? Eight. The next child got there, he ate three. How many cupcakes were eaten altogether? 11. The next child got there. So now we have four kids at the party. The next child got there. He ate three cupcakes. So how many cupcakes were eaten altogether? 14. And so on and so on. Okay. So if we're looking at this question, what's the constant difference? Now remember, we spoke about constant means. Something that's staying the same. What's staying the same each time? What are we adding or subtracting each time? Good, nice, everybody. Well done. Okay, I'm seeing some good answers there. Each time we can see. All right, each time. I'm just going to have to erase this so I have some more space. Each time we can see that the constant difference that we're adding is three. Well done. So as each child arrives, he's getting three more cupcakes. So the constant difference is three. So in number B now, it says to us, let's look at each term. Okay. When we're looking at terms, guys, when we're looking at terms, what we're looking at is we're looking at this top number over, sorry. When we're looking at terms, apologies, let me just finish raising. When we're looking at terms, this is my term over here. So this thing that says T. So let's look at each term. Complete the list and then fill in the flow chart. All right. So Tn is equal to D, which means the difference, times by N, plus, and they want us to go and put in this answer over here. So if we look at the first one, okay, we can see that I have five is my TN, okay, so apologies, oh, board is doing strange things again, okay, so we've got five is equal to, we know what the difference is, the difference is three times Y, what is the green letter? The green letter is this one up here. It's one plus, and what's the other one that's missing? It's gonna be two. So in other words, if we had to take this back, we would say, I know that if I'm looking at the sum, I know that Tn is five, because there's Tn, it's five. It's equal to, we worked out the difference just now was three times by, for this first column, when the Tn was five, okay, what was N equal to? N was equal to one. So what do I need to add? Five is equal to three times one. What's three times one? Three times one is three. Three plus one will give me five. Three plus two. So here, I'm gonna go say to myself, 
Cn is equal to D times by N plus 2. Let's move down and let's have a look. That's true. So we know that 5, because that's what we've just worked like 1, is equal to 3 times 1, which is 3, plus 2 gives me 5. Okay. Now I'm looking at this next one here. So this column over here, where the n is equal to 2. Okay. Let's look at the right-hand side of the sum first. 3 times 2. 3 times 2 gives me 6, hey? So 3 times 2 is 6, right? And 6 plus 2. What's 6 plus 2, guys? 6 plus 2 will give me 8. Let's see if it's true. Let's see if my table works. So where my number was 2, what is the number on the bottom? It's equal to? Eight. Okay. Where the number was two, what's the number in the bottom? It's eight. Let's see if the next one makes sense, and then I'll answer some questions while I let you carry on with this table. So for the next one, let's go have a look at the right hand side. The right hand side, we're leaving three where it is. Three times five. What's the cut the number on the top? The number on the top is three. So three times three, three times three gives me nine, and nine plus two will give me, this will be equal to 11. What's on the bottom? Does the bottom equal 11? Yes, it does. So we know the sum does work. Okay. All right. What I'd like you to go do is I'd like you to go have a look at completing this for me. I'm going to make it a bit smaller so that you can see everything on the same page. I'd like you to go and have a look at completing those last three for me. I'm going to answer two questions in the meantime, and then I'm going to come back and finish off the table with you. So the first person whose hand is up here is Dimple. Dimple, um, you unmuted. What's your question? No, I don't understand the first one. You don't understand the first one. The five equals three times one plus two. That one. No, the one that say D, D times N. How did you get the two plus two? How did I get the plus two? Okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to work it out. All right, hopefully every... Okay, I'm going to do it on the bottom here. I said to myself, okay, I looked at TN. So I looked at it for the first one. So this is the block I'm working in over here. I'm going to look at this here only. Can you see where I've highlighted them, Paul? Yes, sir. Okay. If I'm looking at this first one over here, okay, you tell me, Dimple, for this first one over here that I've calculated, that I've highlighted, instead of seeing TN, see this one that says TN? Instead yes. of seeing TN, what number am I going to see instead? If I go to the column and I go to where it's green, what number is it? One. Okay, no. So here's the number over here. I'm going to highlight it again for you. All right, so there's TN here, hey? Here's TN. Do you see where I'm circling it? Yes. Okay, and we need to go across. What number is TN in the, in the green block? T1. Okay, it's T1, and what's T1 equal to? Five. Five, good. Okay, so instead of seeing TN, simple, what number am I going to see? Five. Good, so I'm going to say five. So I don't want to see TN, I want to see five. Mm -hmm. Equals simple. What did we work out the difference in to be in number A? Here's A here. What did we say that the difference was? Three. We said it was three. Good. Nice. Okay. Times by. All right. Now we're going to go back here. When we go back here, now it says N. You see it says N? Yes. So let's go back to our table quickly. So in my table, let's see. There's my table. I'm just going to color this in again. All right. So there's my table. Here's N, hey? If I go mm -hmm. across, what's N going to be equal to this time? One. One. Good. 
So remember when we first got this, it was blank. Okay, it didn't have that. Okay. And so then it said plus, and there was a space missing here. So if I look at this simple, five is equal to three times one. What's three times one? Three. Three, good. And what must I add to three to get to five? Two. Two, good. So that's how we got two. Does it make sense now? Yes. Oh. Ah, okay. Does it make I'm flat. So good. So we so when we're looking for that first one, that's how we find two. Now, can you okay. see that that two is gonna stay the same the whole way through, Dimpo? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Does it make sense now? Yes. Good. I'm glad. I'm hoping that those people who said that they didn't understand number one in the chat that they were paying attention while I was going through Dimple's question. All right, because I've just calculated it for you again nicely. And Dimple says she is understanding, so that's great. I'm so glad, Dimple. I'm going to put you back on mute. Thank you, Dimple. All right, Bushle. Bushle, how can I help? Hi, good and you. What's your question, Bushle? Ma'am, I was not here last week on Monday. Okay, so Bushle, what I would suggest is you go back. Mr. Hugo has put the link for Monday's lesson in the chat for you. You can go back, you can watch the video from Monday, and you can watch the videos from last week. Okay, ma'am, but ma'am, the okay. part that I don't understand, it's the weird patterns. The weird patterns, okay, but it'll yes. be on Monday. In Monday's lesson, we went through them, okay? So go okay. back, watch the video, and it'll go through it with you, okay? Thank yes, you, Bushle. All right. So let's have a look at finishing these sums, and I will come back to your chat a little bit later on. So my next one, I know that so far, oh, yeah, I did number one, number two, number three. So I know that this number here must be number four. Okay, so I know that this must be number four. So three times four gives me 12. 12 plus two gives me 14. Can I go check in my table whether that's true? I go to where I've got number four and have a look. Look at that. It does equal 14. Let's do the next one. My next one, they're telling me 17 is equal to what? Well, we know what's missing here. The only thing that's missing is the number three. Three times five gives me 15. 15 plus two gives me 17. And finally, the last one that we've got here says 20 equals, and everything is missing. So we know that the first one we can definitely get, because we've got it with all the others, is we can say three. All right. Now, either we can go and we can work out what this missing number is, or we can say to ourselves, hold on a second, we've got a table. And in my table, there's my 20. And when I've got 20 there, what's my n going to be equal to? My n is going to be equal to 6. So I'm going to go full in mine. Okay, so it says, let's draw it in in the cloud here that they've got. What did I do each time? Each time I was saying n times by what? I was timesing it by the difference here. Okay? So I times it by three each time. And what did I add? What was the same thing I added each time? I added two. And that gave me T. Okay, so N times by three plus two gave me T. Can you write down the rule formally? Well, we've been doing it. We did it again and again and again. TN is equal to three, sorry, what times by N it was? three, the difference times by n plus, what was the number we worked out? It was the number two. All right. 
Okay, so please make sure you guys are doing that. Make sure you're logging in. Make sure you're having a look and going through the videos. So last question for today, and I will take some more questions. You download a new game on your phone that costs five rand. You then realize you need strong weapons and armor or the game is boring. So I'm hoping some of you play video games and you awesome games on your phone and you understand what I'm talking about. After that, you spend four rand of your parents' money every day, including the first to buy here in the game. Okay, so there's two new words here that they're talking about. They're saying to us, what is the independent variable? And what is the dependent variable? So when we're looking at this, an independent variable means what is going to stay the same no matter what. Okay, it doesn't matter if it rains or if the sun shines or if um, there's money in your bank account or there's no money in your bank account. What is going to stay the same no matter what? The thing that's going to stay the same the num no matter what is the number of days. So in this case, our independent variable is the number of days, the thing that is going to stay the same no matter what. What is the dependent variable? So what is changing depending on the number of days we have? What's going to change each time? What's going to change each time is the cost. And because we live in South Africa, we're going to say the cost in rands. So it says, complete the table, only C and D for now, to see how much you were getting geared, sorry, how much you getting geared will cost your parents over time. In other words, the same as what we were doing on Monday's lesson, we're going to have a look at now. So if I'm looking at the top one, two, three, four, five, six, those are numbers are staying the same. Those are my independent variable. On the bottom, I've got 9, 13, 17. So I need to have a look, okay? What's changing each time? What's changing each time? Nine plus what gives me to 13? Nine plus four. How do I get from 13 to 17? I'm going to say plus four. Okay. So now, how am I going to get C? How am I going to get C? I'm going to say 17 plus four. And 17 plus 4 gives me 21. Let's check. 21 plus 4, does it give me 25? Yes, it does. So I know I've got the right answer so far. My next one to get D, I'm going to say 25 plus 4. 25 plus 4 gives me 29. So have I worked out the answers for C and D? Yes, I have. C is 21. D is 29. Okay. What is the constant difference? You guys tell us in the chat. What's the constant difference? What's changing each time? I can give you a hint. I just worked it out for you. Good, nice guys, well done. The constant difference, the thing that's changing each time is we think plus four, well done. So the constant difference is four. So now they're saying to us, if T1, so they're getting a bit fancy now. So they're saying if T1, okay, so here's number one. If T1 is equal to nine and T2 is equal to 13, what is T5 equal to? Okay, what is T5 
five. In other words, term five, the fifth term that's there. What is T5 equal to? Tell us in the chat. What is T5 equal to, everybody? Well done. T5 is going to be equal to 25. So I see it almost caught some of you because some people were telling me 21. So be careful. They were very specific. They said T5. So they wanted 25. Good. Now it says to us, look for a relationship between the number of days in and the cost in rands. That will let us fill in the flowchart. Okay, remember for the previous one, what did we say? We said N is going to be equal to, or N, sorry, times by. What are we timesing it by? We timesing it by the difference, okay? So we're going to say N times by four, N times by four, Okay. And if we go to our very first one, n, which is one, so one times four gives me four. Four plus what will give me nine, everybody? What do I need to add to four to get to nine? What must I add to four? Good. I need to add five. Add five. Right, shall we check to see if it's working? Let's check. Let's check the second one. So we're going to say two, two times by four. So two times by four plus five equals two times four is eight. Eight plus five gives me. 13. Is that what I've got for term two? Yes, it is. Let's try one more. Let's go do number five. So let's say n is five. So five. Yeah, five times by four plus five. So five times five is 20, 20 plus five is 25. So are my numbers all working? Yes, they are, because there is my 25. Oh, I love math. Don't you love math? It's like magic. Come on, isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful sum. That's beautiful math. Okay. Let's look at my next question. It says, use the relationship you found to work out the 10th term. So now they want us to work out when n is equal to 10, the 10th term. So we're going to say 10, the variables over there, 10 times by 4 plus 5. Right, go do that sum for me. 10 times four plus five, what do you get? 10 times four plus five, what do you get guys? Nice, 45, well done. So we're gonna put it into our table, 45, well done, nice. Use the relationship to work out what the 60th term is, okay? T60 now, work out what the 60th term is or how much it costs after 60 days. So I'm gonna say 60 times by four plus five. Okay, go do 60 times by four plus five. Five, what do you get? 60 times by four plus five. Nice, well done, 245. 
Well done, guys. 245. So what can we see? We can use that same rule even if it's 100 days. We can go put it into the formula. After 200 days, we can go put it into the formula. The formula is always going to work. Yay. Let's have a look at these last two questions. So number one, I have three, eight, 13, and 23. If I want to do the sum the way we've been doing it tonight, I would draw myself a nice table. I would tell myself that this is N and this is TN, as they call it. So, N is the term number. So I have term number one, term number two, number three, number four, number five, and so on and so on and so on. Term one is equal to three. Term two is equal to eight. Term three is 13. And term four is 23. So I took the exact same thing. I took the number pattern that we had there that they gave us. And all I did was put it into a table. Hey. What's the first thing we did tonight? The first thing we did is we worked out whether there was a common difference. Okay, so we need to go work out, is there a common difference? So what do I add to three to get to eight? What do I add to get to 13? What do I add to get to 23? What's my common difference, everybody? What's my common difference? Tell me in the chat. Good, my common difference is five. So if I'm looking at putting it in my cloud, I've got nine, the n, sorry. My first cloud said time. My second one said plus. And that will give me my term here. I'm sure that the truth is not the right thing yet. Okay, what do we know is going in the times bracket? We know it's going to be five. So let's fill in everything we know for the first one. We know for the first one, here's my first one over here. We know that for the first one, I've got one times by five. I don't know yet what I'm adding. But that's going to give me what? It's going to give me three. So one times five is five. How do I get from five to three? What must I do to get from five to three? Do I need to add something or do I need to subtract something? How do I get from five to three, everybody? You tell me in the chat, how do I get from five to three? Good, I'm gonna minus two. So my bracket here, I'm gonna go say minus two. Right, um, Mr. Hugo, do you want to put the link for us in the chat for the um, quiz before you have to check out? Because I know you have to go to your next part. So you're more than welcome to. Mr. Hugo is gonna put the link for the quiz in the chat. Um, Mr. Hugo, I will post it again as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Hugo. I will see you on Monday. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of the lesson. All right. So here, I'm going to go say minus. Right. So. What I would suggest you do now to practice is I would suggest you take a screenshot of what we've just done. 
okay, take a nice screenshot. I've left number two there for you to try yourself. So I've left number two there for you to try yourself. Use the bubble and use the block for yourself to practice. And on Monday, we're going to go through this one again, and we will do another one. So I'm going to do the answer for this one again on Monday, and I'll do another one for you on Monday as well. So make sure that you have taken a screenshot of this one so you can do some practice at home. Okay, and on Monday, we'll go through this one again, and we'll practice another one. I am going to put the link to get you to the quiz in the chat again so that you can see it. There it is. Okay, the link to this week's quiz is in the chat. So you need to click on that. Okay, you need to click on that. That will take you to today's quiz. Please make sure that you do today's quiz. Otherwise, I am going to say good night to you. If you have done the quiz, you are more than welcome to leave the class. If you don't have any questions, I'm going to answer two more questions now, and then I'm going to ask the rest of you to please put any other questions you might have in the chat. All right. Thank you so much to everybody else. I hope you had a good lesson. If you're not sure, please make sure you go back and you watch the um, video again. All right. Um, I'm seeing some people saying that they can't click the link. Let me see if I can fix that for you to see. Uh, let's see if I can fix that for you. Okay, uh, let's see here what we can do for you and see if that works. And then I will answer another question or some more questions. So unfortunately not, you're going to have to copy it. Oh, there we go. So I have done it so that you can now click the link. I'm going to send it again because people are private messaging me. So it keeps on going to the person that private messages me. There it is on the chat for you. Right. Jabulile, you are unmuted. What is your question? Hi, ma'am. Hi, how can I help? Hi, oh, ma'am. I just wanted to tell you for term number four, you said 23. I think it was supposed to be 18 because if you say 13 to 23, it's not plus five. Let's go see. On the you table might be that right. You the table On this that table. You yes. This one here. Did yes. I say 23? Oh, you are right. You are right. I think I got, I was getting excited. Am I right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I was. I was getting excited. I didn't copy it out right. Thank you so much for pointing that out. I really appreciate it. I like it when you guys are watching what I'm doing. Thank you very, very much. You are completely right. Did you understand today's lesson? Yes, ma'am. A lot. Good. Good. I'm glad. Good. I'll see you on Wednesday. Thanks, Chabulile. Bye, ma'am. Bye. All right. Um, Shleshlo? Shleshlo? Hi, what's your question? I'm asking the answer that says 20. 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 Is it this one here? Yes, ma'am. Instead okay. of saying 3 times 6, I said 9 times by 2 plus 2. <clears throat> Okay, but then it wouldn't be the same as the rule we did, okay? So you must make sure that you're using the same rule. So you, can you see, if you go say nine, then that's not the same as the three. Can you see we've got to keep the, the um, rule there? Mm, same. Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. Um, I see that some, no problem, thank you. I see that Hope, you're busy spamming the chat. You want to know when are we doing output using formula? We will be doing that in our next course. Our next course, which is not next week, but the week after that. So hope if that hope that answers your question. We are doing output using formula, not this next week coming, but the week after that. Right, I'm going to answer one more question. Bushle, what is your question? Hi, ma'am. Ma I don't understand the last ma'am the last question that you did, ma'am. Sure. Let's go have a look, Bushle. Uh, all the way to the bottom. This one over here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so first of all, what's the common difference, Bushle? What's the difference between all those numbers? Ma'am? So the difference, how do I get from 3 to 5, a 3 to 8, from 8 to 13, and from 13 to 18? What's the difference between those numbers? Ma'am, you add. I add. I add what? What am I adding each time? 5. What's good. So remember... 
in that in the little um cloud what are we putting we're putting the thing that we're timesing by hey the difference so what am i times saying there? i'm going to say times by five does that make sense yes ma'am. so far the same as how we did before hey then i'm going to go work my sum up i'm going to say well for the first one one times five gives me five and how do i get from five all the way to three what must i do mm -hmm. what how do i get how do i get from five to three Bushle? So I'm going to rub it up. So this is what I had here. Okay? So that's what I had so far. I had one times by five plus and something plus equals three. Okay, equals three. So what must I do to five to get to three? What must I do? Let me subtract, I think. Good. You subtract. Okay, and what must you subtract? You must subtract two. Two, okay? That's it. Oh, um. no. Okay, so then let's go try this one here. Let's go take three. So we'll say to ourselves, let's do three times five. What's three times five, Bushle? 15. Good, and 15 minus two. What does 15 minus two gives me? It gives you 13. Nice. And was my answer 13? Ma'am? Look here on my table. Was the answer 13? Yes, ma'am. Oh. oh. Max is beautiful, hey? Come on. That's beautiful. Isn't that okay. beautiful? Thank you want to do one more? Wait, do yes, one more with me. See how beautiful Max is. Wait. Let's do four. Watch how beautiful Max is. Let's do four. Okay. Four times five. What's four times five, Bushle? Ma'am, it's 20. And what's 20 minus two? 18. And what's in my table? 18. Isn't it beautiful? Um, it is shiny. I know, math is beautiful. Hey, it's shining. I love it. 